In this video, we're going to look at making and testing contact explosives. Some information about a contact explosive and how it's defined is any chemical substance that explodes violently when it's exposed to a small amount of energy. Some of the better well-known contact explosives are nitrogen triiodide and nitroglycerin, both of which I've done videos on in the past. Both of these are single chemical contact explosives, meaning they're not mixes of anything. This is pure nitrogen triiodide. This is pure nitroglycerin. Nothing else is needed. In this video, I'm going to cover multiple powdered chemicals and metals when they are well mixed. The materials I'm going to use will be covered here very shortly, and the methods is in the next slide. Here's my method, and if you've seen my nitroglycerin video, you've seen this already, but essentially, I took a PVC pipe and um, using wood as spacers, I connected it to longer pieces of wood that would support the PVC pipe and give room down here for a steel plate. That's why I needed these spacer wood pieces here so I can get the steel plate to fit at the bottom. And then I had a one pound zinc rod that I had no use for before this. And I tie a, a nice little eyelet to the top with some string. And when you pull the string, it pulls this all the way up about 36 inches or three feet. And when you let the string go, this comes down and hammers on that steel plate. So now to go over the materials I plan on using, I'm going to turn this over to Dr. Mr. Butane Fireball. This is Dr. Mr. Butane Fireball back with you again. And of course, by now you probably know my name. So maybe one day I'll stop saying it because it's kind of funny that name that is. And today I'm here to talk to you about some contact explosives. So we got different mixes here. Like I was saying, these are not pure chemicals. These are different mixes. And we're going to start with the most basic one I ever saw, and one that works with me. Oh well. First basic mix is going to be potassium chlorate, sulfur, and iron oxide. Now this is the most basic contact explosive you can make. It's so basic sometimes it's kind of hard to set it off, to be honest. But we're going to start with that. And you can see right here I got 0 0.2, 0 0.12, and 0 0.10 grams. I will measure these out first. I promise you that, so you're not bored. Next thing is going to be adding things to the basic mix. This is ammonium perchlorate. All right. We're going to add 0.2 grams to this mix right here. Then we're going to add 0 0.10 grams of magnesium to this mix. So this end of the mix here is going to have like five things mixed in with it. But, you know, I'm I'm interested. I'm, uh, I'm experimenting, you know. Yeah. Next one. Number two. Potassium permanganate, 0.34 grams. Potassium chlorate. Now, this is a big one when it comes to these contact explosives, but I'm not going to add that until the second mix. Aluminum, 0.22 grams. Sulfur, 0.12 grams. So that first mix of number two here is only going to be the potassium permanganate, the aluminum, and the sulfur. Next, we add potassium chlorate. Next, we're going to add magnesium to this whole mix of four here at a rate of 3% of whatever that turns out to be weighing. So that's like time 0 0.03 if my math works out. So once we're done doing all that, we're going to take it, remove the magnesium, and we're going to take this mix right here, and we're going to put dark aluminum at the same rate it is right here at 0 .0 .0 0 0.22 grams, that is. We're going to take that aluminum out and replace it with this. Okay, you're getting the idea here. Number three, potassium chlorate, 0.7 grams. Ammonium perchlorate, 0.4 grams. Aluminum, 0.3 grams. And then, then we're done with that checking out. We're going to add sulfur at 0.35 grams to that mix. Next one, number four, Armstrong's mix. Yeah, this one's pretty well known, but I haven't done it in a while, so let's check it out. Crushed match heads and scraped red phosphorus off the side of the matchbox at a rate of 2 to 1. Crushed match heads, 2. Scraped red phosphorus, number uno, 1. And lastly, but not least, I'm going to try traditional caps. So you know the ones in the cap guns? Yeah, those ones. We're going to use potassium perchlorate, 0.3 grams. Now, that's the first time that's showing up in this whole list right here because I just bought that. Yeah. And then a dark aluminum at 0.12 grams. We're going to grind those up very fine independently and then mix them very well. And that goes for all of these. These are not going to be ground together because they're contact explosive. You start grinding, you've got your explosive right there in front of you. That is not safe. Not at all. So, what I plan on doing again is putting my phone right there and measuring how loud these are. And I hope to figure out which one of these mixes, many mixes here, is the loudest. So, that's about it right there with contact explosives. I appreciate you looking at this list with me. 
and trying to hear my explanations, however bizarre they may be. So, thank you for watching this segment. Good to see you. See you next time. These are the chemicals and compounds that I plan on using in making the different contact explosives. This one was made in a previous video. This was also made from scratch by using powdered aluminum and charcoal and grinding it in a stone polish. Each can contains one of the five different mixes and the additions that's going to be put in the mixes there. And also, I need a consistent amount, and each one has at least half a gram of material. So that's what I'll be using for every single contact explosive test. This is the first can, and it contains the most basic mix, the potassium chlorate, sulfur, and iron oxide, and the same amounts there, which were already discussed, and then the two additives here. I'll be making small piles of each of these. I understand this is not an original idea, but I'll be using stickers to put each of the individual 11 contact explosive mixes, is what it turns out to be, uh, one to put the pile on and the other one to cover it. So this is gonna be my method here. I said I'm gonna use half a gram. Well, that's a pretty large pile, it turns out to be. So I'm going with somewhere here, a 10th to a 12th of a gram with each pile. And then uh, I'll be taking this, like so, on a sticker. So the other side of that one's red. There we go. Okay, so here's our first one ready to go, which was the most basic. I've discussed that many times. If you've seen the nitroglycerin video, you've seen this before. Essentially, this is a one pound zinc rod that's got a string tied to the top of it that goes through a suspended PVC pipe here all the way to the top like so. So when you let the string go, you can smash stuff. I'll be repeating the same procedure for each successive uh, contact explosive mix. Uh, this is the first one, the potassium chlorate, the sulfur, and the iron oxide. Three, two, one. The standard cap. The old hammer here. Again, a hammer. That one took a few hammer strikes, but it measured a max of 67 decibels. Three, two, one. 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 Crushing match heads.
scraping the red phosphorus off the side of the matchbox. Three, two, one. Yeah, that stuff is pretty sensitive. This is the mix they use in traditional caps. Three, two, one. Interesting that this kind of blasted out like a cap. A lot of the other ones are just pulverized, but this blew through just like a traditional cap would. Three, two, one.